to our next learning objective in this kind of mastery phase where you're really putting together a lot of different things that we've learned throughout this unit. All right, we're going back to two, which is all about identities. All right, the thing we're doing in this uh, learning objective is verifying identities. So this is really a kind of different way of thinking about math, and it really kind of prepares you for later math classes. All right, but verifying, a lot of times we have these two things that are equal to each other, and we're kind of solving I, but here we're verifying. We think two things are equal, and we want to show that they are. All right, so it's a kind of completely different way of looking at an equation. All right, so throughout the course of this unit, I looked at a lot of different identities, and we used them to simplify expressions. And again, like I just said, we want to verify that two different things are actually equal. So from the very start, we're not going to know they're equal. So one thing you have to be careful about is you cannot treat these like equations. I can't like add two to both sides to get something to cancel out. I can kind of only work on one side at a time and to it until I show that they're equal. All right, so this might sound confusing for now, but we'll see examples. All right, but just the main thing to think about, all right, they're not equations to start out with. They'll look like equations, but we can't treat them like that because we're trying to verify that they're actually true. All right, so we want to show that's so why I have these kind of question marks around the equal sign. Is this left-hand side actually equal to this right-hand side? So for instance, I couldn't divide both sides by this because I don't know they're equal yet. I can't use all those properties of equations. But really all I can do is simplify both sides and kind of hope that I show that they're equal. All right, so let's see how this is going to work. All right. So I can only work on one side at a time. So right now I'm just going to focus on this left-hand side. And each time I want to simplify it as, is there a uh, algebraic property or a trig identity I can use? And right away I see a trig identity I can use because I have sine of negative x. Pretty much any time you see a negative inside the parentheses, you can use your even and odd identity. So this left-hand side is going to become... All right, sine of negative x, the negative pops out in front. Like that. All right, notice I haven't done anything with the right-hand side. I'm just looking at the left-hand side. Now it doesn't seem like there's any trig stuff I can do because I just have kind of two signs by themselves. But I do have some algebraic thing I can do. I can multiply these two together by foiling. One times one is one. I'm going to get a positive sign and a negative sign. Those are going to cancel. And then positive sign times negative sign is negative sine squared. I notice I still haven't touched the right-hand side. And then 1 minus sine squared, you might remember one of our early identities is this identity. It's called the fundamental identity. If I subtract the sine squared to the other side, I get 1 minus sine squared is equal to cosine squared. So this left-hand side I can rewrite as cosine squared using that fundamental identity. And now you'll see that the left-hand side, exactly the right-hand side that I started with. So this is definitely equal to that, which is equal to this, which is equal to this, which is equal to this. So now we can kind of follow the equal signs along, and now we know this original trig identity had to be true. All right, so I kind of simplified either one or both sides. Again, I'm not touching them ever at the same time. I just simplified the left-hand side. But now that I know that all this left-hand side is equal, then this original part had to be equal to that ending part. So this is what I mean by verifying you're not treating like an equation. You're trying to show that it actually is true that these things are equal. All right, one thing you'll learn as you start doing this is kind of like an infinite different uh, ways you can go. And in fact, for the solutions for this practice set, there are no solutions because everyone's going to do them in a slightly different way. All right, but you're just trying to figure out what can I do to these equations to show that they're actually equal. All right, so for yours, I verify that this uh, identity is true. Uh, and this is what I came up with. So I'm going to start on the left-hand side here. So I just kind of rewrote it. So I have cotangent over cosecant. Uh, the first thing I do is a trig identity thing. We know cotangent is cosine divided by sine, and cosecant is 1 divided by sine. All right, these are identities we've been using for a long time. And generally, it's a good idea when you have these other trig functions mixed in, I rewrite them in terms of sine and cosine and see what happens. Uh, the next thing is an algebraic property. I can take this division and make a multiplication and I flip that bottom fraction to its reciprocal All right, then those signs are gonna cancel out and I just get 
cosine. So again, at the beginning, I didn't know these two things were equal, but I was able to take the cosine, or sorry, cotangent divided by cosecant, and using a series of equal signs, oops, now I know that it's equal to cosine. So I verify this identity, because now I know this left-hand side has to be equal to that right-hand side. I verify that this is true, secant squared of x minus 1 divided by secant squared of x equals sine of x. It might end up being sine squared. That might be a typo, but let's see what ends up happening. All right, again, the general thing is we're going to start. We can't know that these two things are equal to start. All right, so I can't do anything to both sides at once. So really, the general rule of thumb is you're going to need to start with the more complicated side because it's be really hard to turn sine into something that looks this complicated. Versus the other way around, not so bad. Well, it's still not easy, but it's going to be simpler to simplify something and rather than make it more complicated. So I'm going to start on this left-hand side. And figure out how can I simplify this. And again, there's a lot of different ways you could go. I already have kind of two ways in my head that I could think about simplifying this. I would say that your way is, okay, well, I have secant squared, and I know it's normally a good idea to rewrite things in terms of sine and cosine. So I can rewrite this as 1 over cosine squared minus 1 over 1 minus cosine squared. Okay, well, that doesn't make it look any easier, but is there anywhere I can go? And if you think about to our half-angle identities, we actually did something like this before. We had this kind of complex fraction within a fraction, so what I want to do is multiply this top by cosine squared, because it's going to end up canceling out the denominator, which means I also have to do it on the bottom of my fraction, which in this case is super convenient, because when I multiply this cosine squared in, cosine squared times 1 over cosine squared cancels out, so it becomes 1, and again, cosine squared times 1, and the bottom is really nice, they just completely cancel out. And then using my Fundamental identity again, 1 minus cosine squared is sine squared. All right, so with the typo, we actually verify that this equation is not true. All right, this left-hand side is not equal to sine of x. All right, but I'm guessing based on the fact that that parentheses is in an exponent position that this was actually supposed to be sine squared of x. And if that's what it was, then we verified it because we started on the left-hand side and got to the right-hand side. I, in general, it happened for all these examples so far. I start on the left and simplify to get to the right. That's not always going to be the case. All right, like I said at the beginning of this example, I right, start on the more complicated side, and something with a fraction and stuff is going to be more complicated than just a single trig function. All right, so for your turn, I go ahead and try to verify that this left-hand side is equal to 1. Again, which one's more complicated? 1's pretty simple, so you're probably going to start on the left and see if you can simplify it down to 1. And here's what I came up with, just kind of going through. And again, this is not the only way to do it. I think I actually might have made it more complicated than it had to be. But we know we're starting on the left-hand side because that's more complicated than the right-hand side. So it's easier to simplify than make things more complicated. So we FOIL, 1 times 1 is 1. You get a negative cosine, a positive cotangent, and those last two together. Then my idea was, well, cotangent is one of those ones I can rewrite as sine and cosine. So it's cosine divided by sine. And then this first part, 1 minus cosine of x, turns into sine squared using my fundamental identity. Kept the second part. And the third part, I multiplied the terms together. And then I was like, well, that still looks really complicated, but maybe something nice will happen if I get a common denominator. Right? I have these three different things with fractions, so I get a common denominator by multiplying this first one by sine squared over sine squared to turn it into that. Now that we all have a common denominator, I can combine all the tops into that. And this is the point where I was like, I don't know where this is going, right? but what could I do? I move the sine to the fourth next to the cosine to the fourth, generally things with the same power like being next to each other. And this is a difference of squares. So if you ever have two perfect squares being subtracted, you can factor it as this kind of pattern. So sine to the fourth is two sine squareds. Cosine to the fourth is two cosine squared. So I can factor it using this 
special pattern. And it's right hand one, sine squared plus cosine squared is one. All right, so that just goes away. And I have, if I can select it, this cosine squared and that negative cosine squared cancel. So all that's left on this top is actually just that sine squared. And then cancel at the bottom and you get one. All right, so this one actually is the way I did it at least. There might be another way that you see that isn't as many steps. All right, but the way that I did it, I ended up getting all right, a lot of powers of sine and cosine and eventually they end up canceling out. But again, I started on the left-hand side, just did a series of algebraic or uh, identity substitutions, and I get down to the right-hand side. So now I know this first part, right, these two things had to be equal. All right, so verifying trig identities is really like the key to the next level of mathematics. Right, you're using a lot of different algebraic properties, a lot of different trig identities. Right, you're not treating it like an equation, so you're not multiplying both sides of an equation by something. Right, you're only kind of seeing where can I go next without any clear direction. And eventually you want to get down to a point where you change one side into the other. All right, and again, just a kind of recap of something you learned before this is kind of one i can't ask a multiple choice question about all right but just something that you've had to do for it which of these is equal to one over sine of x because right, this type of thing is going to come up a lot when you're verifying trick identities